Believe it or not, U.S. Census data now indicates that around 80% of Americans and well over half of the human population live on islands. Now, these aren't your quintessential islands, perhaps, not surrounded by ocean and sand and, uh, and palm trees. I'm instead talking about urban heat islands. Human landscapes that we've built out of cement and brick and asphalt absorb more of the sun's energy throughout the day and then re-emit it back into the air as heat throughout the afternoon and into the evening. This raises urban air temperatures relative to natural landscapes and particularly in neighborhoods with people who are disproportionately affected by this heat because they can't adapt to it. Now, this is bad because climate scientists understand that hot heat waves are going to get hotter and longer because of human-caused climate change. So how do we prepare our urban heat islands for the longer, stronger heat waves of the future? That's where I think you come in. But first, a little bit about myself. I was a big kid growing up. Uh, I wore husky clothes and I sweat a lot. I still sweat a lot. Now, which is probably why I remember so vividly a heat wave that hit the city of Chicago, Illinois in 1995. Now, my family threw a big yard party. You know, uh, watermelon, popsicles, slip and slide, air conditioning, whole nine yards. But temperatures soared to well over 115 degrees in the city of Chicago. Depending on the estimate you see, well over 700 people died due to the heat wave. Now, follow-up studies of who died in the heat wave indicated that poor, elderly, African-American neighborhoods were more likely to suffer mortality than their affluent white neighbors. Remember that, because we'll come back to it. Now, I've always been fascinated by extreme heat because it kills more Americans every single year, on average, than any other weather-related hazard we face even more than the big charismatic storms like hurricanes and tornadoes combined. This is particularly worrisome because climate scientists understand that heat waves are going to get longer and stronger. For example, here in Richmond, we could see about eight times as many days that go at or above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are the days that feel like you're walking around inside someone else's mouth. Now, that doesn't have to happen uh, until we you know, significantly reduce our heat trapping gas emissions for burning fossil fuels. But anyway, we know that those 95 degree days are made worse in our cities because of urban heat islands. So let's take a look at that. If we were gonna fly into this picture and find the hottest spot to the touch, think in your head, where would you go to find the hottest spot to the touch and say it on three, one, two, three, Great, okay, now where would you find the coolest spot? On three, one, two, three. Awesome, I made you make hypotheses. You didn't get a scientist on stage and not expect to do a little bit of science. Now what we can do is we can actually explore this with a thermal camera. We can test our hypotheses. So let's take a look at that. The brighter colors are warmer temperatures and the cooler temperatures are the darker colors. Congratulations, the asphalt parking lot was the hottest place and under the big mature oak tree was the coolest. But there's some interesting detail here. The dead grass is the same temperature as the cement. And the native plant garden that we have at the Science Museum of Virginia is cooler than the grasses that we put around it. And then the colors of the cars dictate what the temperature is coming back to that thermal imaging camera. Now, what would we learn from a picture like this if we wanted to design a city that actually reduced heat during a heat wave? We'd probably, one, throw shade all over the place. Then any exposed surface, we might plant native plant gardens on or make it a reflective color. Is our city built like that? Let's take a look. The city of Richmond, much like many cities around the United States, have very concentrated areas where there are trees and shade and those areas that do not have trees and shade. If there's anything that we learned from that previous photo, those areas could be much warmer during heat waves than those areas with a lot of trees. Ah, we have another hypothesis. So let's test it. 
with my friends at the universe, uh, uh, Portland State University and several organizations around uh, Richmond, including Groundwork RVA, BCU, U of R, the city of Richmond, we actually drove around the city all at the same time during a major heat wave. Uh, we sent cars all over the place with these uh, little thermometers hanging out of our windows. This is a John James, a senior at Open High School, uh, fixing the t temperature uh, sensor to the window. And uh, we went around the whole city, uh, and what did we find? Well, some areas of Richmond, the hottest and coolest place, uh, the difference was about 16 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a very different heat wave for two people in the same city at the same time. Looking closely at the census data of the areas that were warmer indicated that these areas have higher populations of African Americans, have higher rates of poverty, have lower rates of home ownership, home ownership. people take more public transit, transportation to work, and there's a lot of vacant homes around them. At the same time, the cooler neighborhoods have higher white populations, they have lower rates of poverty, they own their homes, they take their own cars to work. Now, this is not only a problem here at Richmond. This is a systematic climate change equity issue across this entire country. In other cities that we have this same kind of data. Now we had to check our answer. We asked the Richmond Ambulance Authority, where do you go to the most often for heat related illnesses during the summer? And what did we find? Well, the hotter areas have higher rates of people calling for an ambulance during a heat related illness during the summer. Now this leads to more questions. What can we do as a city to prepare for the heat, hotter, longer heat waves of the future? And what can we do to design our city better to make heat less of an issue? And I think that's where you come in. I'd like to challenge you to think about what it is to have a right to a resilient, healthy city in the face of climate change. Be the first city among many uh, in the South, or uh, the first in the Southeast to hold a youth climate summit. Most of all, bring this into the limelight. The 2070s are not a threat to the people in power today. They are a threat to you and me and all of the young generations across this country. We are the ones inheriting this country. Now, don't let the haters get you down. You can change the world, and I think it starts with throwing a little shade. Thank you. <laughs>